Well, welcome back. Uh, sorry for that break. We were having with us um, an environmentalist, um, Eddie Oksayenen, the director of the Blue Green Initiative uh, a Development Network. Uh, we've been talking about the issues with regards to the environment against the backdrop of the celebration internationally of the World Cleanup Day, which holds tomorrow across the globe. Yes, and uh, we have him back on the line. Yeah, we have him back on the line, and um, we would continue from where we stop. Hello, Eddie Young, I, I, I hope you're still there. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, thank, okay, you thank you very much for back. your patience. Uh, it's glad to know you're there. Yes, we were talking about the issue of environment and domesticating it to our own climb. You talked about the mindset of the people. Uh, the Niger Delta is a place that is mostly having our largest share of its landmass uh, taken over by water. In Delta State, where we are, there's water, most of the areas. The local governments are water prone. Now, could you tell us, how does this play when it comes to cleaning the environment, when we say right, world so cleanup day? Before we went on that break, I was, I, I was giving an example. Yes, had, tied to this. Yeah. And I indicted our ladies, you know, the way they go about with um, what they call um, free uh, um, clothing. You know, they just go to the market and pack those clothing, even shoes, and sometimes bags. Yes. That they end up not having use of. They end up burning them, and some they trash them, even in the gutters. So that was the first lifestyle I had mentioned. The second lifestyle has to do with um, steel consumption. But now, how can we deal with a you know uh, single-use plastics? So you on the you on the you on the go, and you are thirsty. You grab a bottle of water or a sachet of water, and then just after go up in it, the next point of trashing is or trashing it is in the gutter or just throwing it by the road, or even um, uh, you know soda and other kinds of things, even sachet of snacks. Even our packaging nylons. So it's a lifestyle called our consumption lifestyle. Now, when you trash when you trash these things like this, where do you think they will end up? Most of them, if you don't block our waterways, find their way into the ocean. And when they get into the ocean, they get um, you know, ingested by fish. And in the process of bioaccumulation, we still end up eating that fish, taking in microplastics into our system. Two, the ones that end up in the water, they block the, the waters, which are supposed to be channels where, you know, um, uh, uh, water, a runoff, wa water uh, runoff, you know, gets into the uh, proper channels and all of that. When these channels are blocked, we will cry foul that uh, you know flood has taken over our houses, flood has taken over our power plants, and all of that. But we forget that somewhere in our quibble, you are eating or uh, a snack and, and trash the, the, the nylon into the gutter. You have drank water and threw and threw the container or nylon into you know the, the gutter. And somewhere in Delta State, your cousin your brother, your sister had done something similar. And the cumulative effect of this is that the waterways will be blocked. And with the signal NIMET is giving, with the early warning signals NIMET is giving, you find out that we are also contributing to us becoming victims. You understand? Yes. So very well. We must make a conscious effort. The agencies of government in our region must make conscious effort, you know, that they deliver on their mandate and their responsibilities. Yeah, what should be the kind of uh, responsibilities they should take in this particular kind of scenario? Uh, you talked about the lifestyle of the people. No, uh, no. They have their life to live, but the no. government also has no. its role to play. No. They give most of their responsibility. Hello, sir. Yes, we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Go ahead, we Are can you hear you. Yeah. Hello, can you hear us? Am I enough, please? Yeah, go ahead, we can yes, hear go you. Yes, on. Yeah, sure, I can hear you. Yeah, okay, we talked so about the role of government. What role I mean, do you think government could like play? I like sharing. Yeah. I call it the Own Your Gutter campaign. The Own Your Gutter campaign where everybody 
every shop owner, if you own a shop by the road and there's a gutter, the front of your shop, that gutter is your own. So you eat all of us make that conscious if you own a house and the house is by the roadside there's a gutter that the gutter in front of your house is your own even the one opposite your house where there is no structure is your own gutter now how would that help if everyone make conscious effort that they keep their gutters clean all of the time there will not even be need for uh, environmental sanitation that uh, they lock people down at home and not liable to have free movement because already what is suspended to be done in one day had already been done in literally little quantities yes. every day absolutely and that way, uh, okay. you do not have need to you know, announce every last Saturday of the month or every space out of the month depending on what the state does uh, as environmental sanitation and you keep people at home and these people that you are keeping at home are not even doing anything they don't they come out they are <laughs> surrounded screen. There were efforts by so the if government. People okay. Adopt this, yeah, go ahead. If okay. people adopt this method by adopting the gutters in front of their house to be their home, you find that there will be less of flood issues. Except where it is overwhelming, like when the dam is over flooded or something. And even when the dams are flooded, you still find that if the gutters are taken, at least there will be some leeway for these waters to be you know, properly rechanneled and all of that. So the blockade should be, you know, people should take make conscious about to say that they, they, they do not just, you know, treat our, our water channels with liberty. Okay, so um, talking about um, government having environmental sanitation days, that's one of the efforts by the government to make sure that the environment is clean. And I've also noticed that uh, some time ago you uh, bought a public vehicle and you see them having baskets yes. in either the, uh, in the vehicles or tricycles. Yes. yes, you see them and they, they expect you to throw trash into... Um, into this basket in their vehicles but we notice that a lot of persons don't even steal so i mean is this a, a, a thing of illiteracy or poverty you're in a vehicle there is a basket to throw your trash but we still throw it on the street so do you think this is um, a an illiteracy issue or a poverty issue or we're not being enlightened enough in addition to that what kind of legislation or enforcement uh, can be made to ensure that this issue being talked about can be nipped in the bird Okay, now first, I, I think, think all of these state government they have policies with regards to environmental regulation. But the major problem happens to be enforcement. Let me give a clear example in the South South and of course the Niger Delta will be here. In Cross River State, when the state, he took the issue of environmental sanitation, in fact the top team serene and green environment very serious i think he took it personal about that time in cross river in Talaba, to be precise make her use me in Papa. the no one you wear make the day inside moto chop chewing gum throw away the sachet outside the no one you wear make you chop banana for moto to wave the banana peel outside, I mean banana peel that is bad, degradable. Why, did, why, why was that possible? Because the enforcement was there. If a vehicle is, I don't know, it's like they were setting cameras, a human camera sort of, all of the place. If a vehicle is caught with someone, you know, throwing trash from the car, they will pursue you, they will arrest you, and sanctions will, will be made so you find that, that it's not the government you know, giving a basket and all of that or people selling baskets or it's in the, the enforcement it is in the implementation we have beautiful policies environmental policies recently i did a website and i found out that nigeria has been blessed over the years with a series of fantastic policies that will that you know kept us in one of the uh, as one of the best um, the countries in the world, even in the area of the environmental controversy. But what about the implementation? So the problem is in the uh, consistency with implementation. So you find that someone will come out to repeal a policy, a law of government, without really finding out what was done before now. Instead of trying to you know, see how it can be enforced, 
they want to repeat it and want to all sometimes create something very different but similar to what was already on ground so the problem is around enforcement once the enforcement is there whatever little enlightenment you do will spread like wildfire now let me tell you how this works uh, uh, uh what was that delta name uh why why was in a car and then um okay there was a driver okay i don't know how i'm just going to see how to spread delta all right go ahead okay. to reflect delta <laughs> <laughs> all right go ahead was a driver and on their way why they trash something on the way and the car was struck down and they got arrested or the civil measures were you know uh meted out on them if the driver and the person who tried who, 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 who tried the, the west indies similar way don't forget this is not done in secret people eyes are watching and then they will even come to find out what happened why are they market like why are they treated this way not maltreated please why are they treated this way why are they getting this punishment and then they will tell them oh the driver was the one carrying this lady or this man and in his car, he, he threw out waste indiscriminately. So for not caution his passenger, he had to also receive the same punishment as the, the passenger. <laughs> Maybe okay. in that scene, we had about um, three people. That is already public enlightenment. Because those three people will go and tell another person. Yes. And then that six people are ready. The six will spread the... So people now become conscious. Hey, if you're in a car, if you are in fact, if you are trekking on the road, please don't trash because then you out. The government are out. If they catch you, <laughs> the punishment you will serve. You understand? So that way, then you now use the conventional media like what people are doing with the TV, what you uh, the, you know, some media, media house, and then even you know, people and they, in this age of social media, and with a very little campaign, you find out that. The, the ripping effect will be felt across the board and you'll find that we will live in a clean, serene, and green environment. And the issue of, you know, celebrating world clean up our agro would be a, an everyday thing. All right, um, w w w what do you make of this? Hello, Edwin Sayene. Uh, we know that um, some yes, um, officials of government use this for revenue making. Uh, in some states, I'm aware that they sell the baskets and you have to renew the baskets every year. I'm talking about the sanitation baskets. And you have a task force that arrests you when you don't have a new basket. You know, the State Environmental Sanitation Authority. You keep buying baskets every year. The line is breaking, please. Oh dear, I, 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 can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me now? Okay. All right. Uh, talking about enforcement yeah, I can hear a lot yeah talking about enforcement in some of the southeastern states uh we've come across um little baskets at the back seat of the driver and these baskets are usually renewed every year you have to buy a new basket every year the one for 2022 2023 2024 and they arrest you for not having a basket uh do you think those kind of measures help to improve the cleanliness of any city because um, not having a basket is one thing, but I have a basket I bought last year, and then the, um, I have to renew the basket every the year. It's year. more of a revenue-making thing. Are you worried about this kind of um, enforcement? Yes, I know. I'm aware of it. First, it is extortion, and it's highly condemnable. So what's your counsel to the, such um, I mean, entities secondly, of government? Secondly, what is the recruitment process of the people you know implementing this basket policy of the thing who are the people involved in the implementation you find out that it is, it is the algorithms <clears throat> and these algorithms are algorithms are given um uh, target, target and by all means they want to you know get their target and then also give some to the government or whoever commissioned them to do the job and then also take the, their own um, share of the money so it's extortion again the people are ignorant because they do not even know the impact of what they are doing now if you are asking these drivers imagine 1000 drivers changing their basket every year and they charge this basket indiscriminately and the basket 
ends up in landfill. Okay. You 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 see the impact now on the environment, causing environmental depression, and of course, uh, uh, the impact of uh, microplastics are that I cannot be overemphasized. Okay. So um, I would like to ask you this. Is affected and all of them. Okay, I would like to ask you this before we go. What so, indigenous practices can Nigerians adopt or go back mm -hmm. to, you know, to um, help contribute to a greener environment? What can we uh, adopt or maybe we've been, we've been doing it in the past, we've stopped it. Can we go back to, to help us achieve a greener environment? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah it's possible, but it's very difficult. If we can go back to adopting communism lifestyle, Communism lifestyle, what do you How mean? Do you mean? Growing up in the village. Every Saturday, especially for us male children, every Saturday, we are to clean the street. So we'll clear the grasses that are grown into the street, sweep the street, pack um, dead leaves and, you know, stuff that are dead around the environment. And you'll find that all through the week, we may have a very clean environment. So, and this happened because we adopted a communal lifestyle where everyone is regarded as one. You understand? So in communism, we were we able to conserve our environment. In fact, about that time, if you are seen as a male child and you did not go out to clean the environment, on that particular Saturday, you'll be treated as an outcast, even with, by your peers. Mm. But in this age where everyone is now is living an alone kind of individualistic lifestyle, you are trying to raise a small structure, you're already mounting a fence that is bigger than the, the structure, <laughs> so that you don't even know what is happening across the fence. Once you drive it, you are locked out of the, the society. And when you come and you die without even looking at that, the gutter in front of your house is blocked, that the grass is that have grown your street because nothing concerns you. Hmm. You are living an individualistic kind of lifestyle. So if we go back to adopting a communal lifestyle, it will go a long way to, you know, to help us you know, um, come, uh, bring back those, um, uh, those um, norms, those um, uh, uh, attitudes that we're able to, you know, um, used before now to conserve our environment and of course keep them All right. Oh, thank you very much. That was a perfect way to drop this anchor. Uh, if we go back to our communal ways of doing things, we probably would have a better way of doing this uh, in a manner that we have a cleaner environment. Yes. Uh, that's coming from Mr. Ediok Seyene Ndunobong. He is the director of the Blue Green Development Initiative Network. He's an environmentalist in his own right. And I want to say thank you very much for uh, being part of the program this morning. We really appreciate your presence. Thank, thank you so you, much. And thank you to your co-host. Um, excellent, excellent personality. And thanks for all the things you do for me. All right. All thank right. you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, the Quest Show. And I'm sure we'll be dropping Anchor here. Perhaps you've heard him speak and we've laid the groundwork and the foundation. Uh, what's your take in this regard before we, 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 we let the loose out of this uh, studio? Okay. So um, we, we've discussed a lot. We've discussed about government's efforts. We've mm -hmm. talked about what we can do as individuals. He just talked about us going back to communal mm -hmm. lifestyle. Uh, and I think that we have to consciously adopt these methods if we are sure and first of all we have to agree that we do require to be in the greener economy you know he just talked about how we throw uh, plastic into the mm. ocean and then the fishes eat this plastic consume it and then we end up consuming it, it ourselves. becomes counterproductive yes and some actions our yes. actions and inactions it, are really telling us yes yeah. they come back to telling us and if we if we can um, you know if we are aware of these things I, I think people are not aware if we can be really aware of these things and uh, I, I think we'll be more conscious about our lifestyles all right and to my mind i want to call on everyone out there the environment is your friend and make the environment to be your own friend as it's also friendly be environmental friendly let's keep a clean environment and a green environment and tomorrow we shall be marking the world cleanup day yes. so join and nigeria will be joining the committee of nations the world over to be part of this well tomorrow we'll be talking environment again hopefully and when we do so we do hope that on the flip side of it we'll have an, a better environment well that's how we drop anchor on the show this morning on the, the quest today yes and um, 
We do hope that you found it very rewarding, entertaining, and enlightening. Right from the news up until the municipal reviews and up until this time when we talk about environment. Yes. I'll be stepping out to go and clean my environment. How about you? I think I will do that. I will do that as well. And right. don't forget that um, the sports shuffle will be coming your way shortly. And then uh, that would end the um, quest today for today. And we'll be back again tomorrow, same time and the uh, same station and don't forget the conversation continues anytime on all our social media platforms on tv it's quest television for radio uh instagram and x and we're on cable tv at start time channel 236 and moplex channel 716. all right don't go away stay tuned to the quest television we'll be handing you to the scintillating world of sports and the driver of that train on the sports scene is shedra <laughs>